When you see this incredible transformation of Spider-Man, what do you think of? That this is just some part of a cool fiction story, right? I mean, nothing like this would actually happen in the real world. Well, what if I told you that what you just saw is actually not that far-fetched? What if I told you that this bizarre phenomenon of a spider's DNA being incorporated into humans might actually be possible now? Genetic engineering, it's happening right now. And the coolest part is that this technology is new. So how did I come across such a peculiar topic? Well, it all started in the very stuffy biology lab of my high school. Just a normal day where usually I'd be counting the minutes for the bell to ring for break. But this lesson was a bit different. It was the first time that we had talked about what DNA actually is and the immense importance it has in all of us. Something so microscopic found in you, in me, and in every living thing on this planet and is unique for each and every one of us. What I learned was that DNA is essentially the book of life. And what this technology has the ability to do is rewrite this pre-written script of our whole being as we know it. So I was instantly fascinated about the immense poss possibilities this meant for the scientific world, that I thought maybe this is what I wanted to pursue as a career. To no surprise, my parents were quite confused about the whole idea. I mean, in a time where teenagers like me strive to pursue amazing careers such as medicine, mathematics, law, I was telling them I wanted to pursue a career that would involve me doing weird experiments for the rest of my life. My curiosity, though, didn't stop at high school. That very summer, I applied to multiple internships at the Cypress Institute of Neurology and Genetics. There, I met researchers, and they enchanted me with their years of work and the different methods that they used, only to end it all with, so yeah, this has been our project for the past 20 years. Uh, none of it worked. As you can imagine, it was a huge kick in the head for me. But at the end of the day, any finding in science is important, no matter the outcome. There was one thing, though, I was very excited about. I had the chance to extract my very own DNA. The very fact I held my own genetic code in my hands was absolutely mind-blowing. I raised my little test tube in the light to reveal a tiny string in which that tiny string is literally what makes me, me. And the coolest part is that with this technology, that tiny string can be read and molded into something different. So you might be wondering, Valeria, why is this relevant now? Why should we, the people, care about what crazy experiments scientists do in their little rabbit holes of labs? Well, genetic engineering. It's happening now, people. If you have DNA and care about your health and the future of our species, then this directly involves you. We are in the midst of a genetic revolution, and we are nowhere near ready or prepared to control or handle the changes coming our way. So today, I will talk to you about two uses of this technology that I came across and found very interesting and believe will revolutionize our, spe our species, as well as dive into the ethics of it all. So, use number one, healthcare. Genome editing can be greatly owed to the famous Human Genome Project of 2003, where scientists could read every single piece of our DNA. What does that mean? Well, from billions and trillions of A, G, Ts, and Cs, scientists could figure out 
the color of your eyes, personality traits, and maybe what you are allergic to without ever having met you. Now imagine if your doctor had this detailed information about you. What we have now is generalized healthcare, meaning everyone receives more or less the same treatment for common issues. But what if we shifted to specialized healthcare, tailored and designed just for you? Essentially, what we have now is sick care. You get sick, and then you get taken care of. But what if we had the alternative? Your doctor would know possible genetic diseases that could arrive, arise in your lifetime and help you prepare for what is to come. With genetic engineering, we have the ability to end many, if not most, genetic diseases, such as thalassemia or cystic fibrosis. Now, this may all sound very convenient. However, we must be sure that this is regu regulated appropriately, as such sensitive information could end up in the wrong hands. Now, let's consider use number two of gene editing the leisure aspect, or the cosmetic use. At some point in your life, I think we have all blamed certain undesired characteristics on the genes of our family, whether it be anger issues, or hair type, or nose size. Well, what if you had the choice to not pass down these characteristics to your child? You might have seen this coming. I am talking about designer babies. Funnily enough, it's as close to Build-A-Bear as you think. This, however, is illegal because it is very important to know that it is one thing to permanently mess with the human genome and a totally different thing to just change how some genes are expressed. Do you think designer babies will be the new norm? Well, if the people want it and ask for it, the companies will supply it. So it is up to us to see whether this practice will become normalized or restricted. Another leisure use of this technology can be found in the category of biohacking. Think of biohacking as DIY biology. It covers a huge range of activities, from performing multiple experiments on different organisms to even changing your own biology. For example, taking a young person's blood, injecting it into your veins, in the hopes that it'll fight aging. And yes, that's a real thing, and it's called young blood transfusion. An example of a biohacker is former NASA member, Josiah Zayner. He believes that everyone should conduct genetic engineering, even in their own basements. Hence, his company called Odin, which delivers GE kits to your door. He is of the belief that we need people who have a combination of knowledge and a little bit of crazy. They will be the ones willing to take the risks. There is a whole community of biohackers out there conducting crazy experiments that we are completely unaware of. Yet, this could be a, a form of science moving forward. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Genetic engineering. It's happening right now. We are hacking evolution. Now, I just want to take a moment to take all this in. Where do we go from here? Listen to that one more time. Hacking evolution. No longer are we constricted by our own DNA. We will be able to enhance our species in any way we'd like. Is it what someone would consider natural? Maybe not now, but at the end of the day, we will be the ones to decide what is. Take the disease malaria, for example. It kills about 228 million people per year, figures that are much scarier than COVID-19s, just to put into perspective. It can be eradicated 
by genetically engineering male mosquitoes to become infertile, which would then lead to species extinction. Is that natural? Probably not, as exterminating a whole species cannot be done without any severe consequences. However, will we consider this as adaptation, as survival of the fittest? Is this the way we want to go? This technology is not so different from others. Take nuclear power, for example. Do you think scientists discovered it, thinking that humans would take it and make bombs? No. They thought about the clean and renewable energy it would bring, bring us. Well, it's the same with this. This is why I want to talk to you about this today, to create awareness. I'm not asking you to go read books about this or watch lectures. However, it is crucial that we are educated and form an opinion as a society, as we will decide the use of this in our future. What I told you here today will be part of our lives. Genetic engineering is the future, whether you like it or not. What we must do is familiarize ourselves with it and make sure we push it in a positive and safe direction. We are at an era where, with the knowledge and the supplies that we have, anything is possible. With these tools, we can build mountains, but just as well destroy the skies. No one can say this better than with the person who started this talk in the first place, and I would like to close it full circle with him. With great power, comes great responsibility. Thank you.